So today we'll talk on uh, retinopathy of prematurity. Retinopathy of prematurity is one of the very important morbidities seen in preterm babies. It is a quality indicator of uh, care of very low birth weight babies. So if you have a uh, lot of premature babies and if your uh, ROP is very high, that means there is a need for improving your quality of care. So as more and more babies survive, there will be more and more incidence of prematurity, uh, premature survivals, and there will be more of uh, ROP. So what we'll do now is um, we look at the epidemiology of retinopathy of prematurity. We look at the risk factors, pathogenesis, classification, and also we look at the new classification or new additions. How do we treat retinopathy of prematurity? When do we screen? How do we screen? And what can be done to prevent ROP from the neonatal perspective? So this is an important slide showing the epidemics of ROP. So as baby started surviving or as the oxygen was used for survival of premature babies, mainly for respiratory distress syndrome or babies with RDS. The oxygen was started to use in 1940 to 50s. And they started using oxygen. They found this peculiar disease in preterm babies and it's called retrolental fibroplasia. So when there was a peak of this retrolental fibroplasia causing blindness, they realized that it is related to oxygen use. So they started restricting the use of oxygen. So by 1970s, you can see here that uh, the incidence of ROP has dramatically fall down. Then you can see the second epidemic started from 1980 to 1990s. That is as although the use of oxygen was restricted, but the number of babies surviving less than 28 weeks and less than 1,500 grams gradually increased. And this resulted in increased, increased risk of babies having ROP. So the historical perspective tells that the most important risk factors for ROP are prematurity, low birth weight, high oxygen use and increased sickness. So you can see here that when the babies less than 1000 grams, 1940-50s, they had high mortality and so obviously there is no ROP because ROP comes up among babies who are surviving. 1960-70s, some of these babies started surviving and then ROP started seen in them. 1980s, you can see that the mortality has dramatically decreased in these babies and then there was a significant increase in the risk of ROP. Now, in the Look, birth, in the babies with birth weight 1000 to 1500 grams in 1950s, they used to survive, but then the ROP was also significantly higher. 60s, 70s, these babies survived and then ROP improved. And as the mortality decreased and the quality of care improved, you can see there is no ROP in very low birth weight babies or less than babies within 1 to 1.5. So this is how the historical perspective of ROP is. But in India, we are in a third epidemic called a combination of the first and second epidemic. In India, we have centers where some of these babies, 1000 to 1500 babies are surviving and we are seeing ROP in them, probably because of increased use of oxygen and other risk presence of other risk factors. And we have some other centers where the mortality is very low, even in the extremely low birth weight babies and some incidence of ROP is related to that. So in India, we have the third epidemic, which is because of which we are seeing ROP in extreme preterm babies and also in very low birth weight babies. And sometimes even in babies less than 2.5 and in late preterm also, we see ROP in developing countries, probably because of increased risk of infections and increased risk of using oxygen. So if you look at the data from our country, overall, the incidence of ROP is almost uh, 27 to 35%, that is almost one in three babies in very low birth weight babies are having ROP. And in extremely low birth weight, nearly one in two babies are likely to have ROP. And among the babies who have ROP, nearly 10 to 20% develop severe ROP. And now in our country, we know that nearly 500 babies per year are becoming blind from ROP. Probably because of inadequate screening or timely management rather than because of the disease per se. So which are these babies who develop ROB? In our country, it is premature babies with gestation less than 35 weeks, 
and birth weight less than or equal to 2000 grams. And also in bigger babies, that is babies of late preterm and babies with birth weight more than 2 kgs also develop ROP because when, when there is increased use of oxygen and for prolonged use of oxygen like more than 3 to 4 weeks. So in all sick babies who are late preterm, they are also at babies who develop, uh, likely to develop ROP. The important risk factors are related to oxygen. Both hypoxia and hyperoxia can cause ROP or the fluctuation of oxygen use is more likely to cause ROP in small premature babies. Blood pressure fluctuations, acidosis, use of blood transfusions, exchange transfusion in small babies, presence of infection. Infection is a very, very important risk factor in our country as an important cause of ROP. Patent ductus arteriosus, apneas are some of the very well-known risk factors of ROP. Growth. Poor growth is associated with low IGF levels and low IGF levels have been associated with increased risk of ROP and some people have started predicting the risk of ROP plotting the growth curve or plotting the growth on growth curve. So you can actually predict the ROP uh, in premature babies when you start following the, their growth. Those babies who do not grow are the babies likely to have severe ROP. Now important to know the stages of ROP and the severity of ROP. Those ROP is staged in this format. So it is, it is clubbed into stages, zones and extents and plasticities. Stages are from 1 to 5. Zones are 1, 2, 3. Extents are clock hours are divided. The globe is divided into clock hours. And we have 12 sectors. And these are uh, each sector is about 30 degrees. And there is a term called plus disease, which is dilatation and tortuosity of vessels. So this is the classical uh, classic, uh, stage, uh, classical way to define the severity of ROP. So you have a stage, you have a zone, and you have extent and the plus disease. This is how ROP is described. We will try to look at these uh, uh, analysis of stage, zone, extent and plus disease. So zones are, um, so zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. The central part of the retina is zone 1. Following that is zone 2 and the peripheral part is zone 3. So you can see that there is a macula and there is an optic disc. We all know that the blood vessels grow from the optic disc towards the periphery and this growth completes by about 36 weeks on the nasal retina and by 40 weeks on the temporal retina. Sometimes in premature babies this can get prolonged to up to 48 weeks too. Zone 1 is double the distance between the macula and optic disc. So double the distance between optic disc and macula is zone 1, the radius. Zone 2 is from zone 1 to nasal serrata on the medial side and you draw a circle that will become on the temporal side it will be midway and zone 3 is mostly on the temporal side the rest of the retina. So you need to remember that whatever ROP sets in in zone 1 and zone T, zone 2 is more severe ROP than the ROP which is seen in zone 3. Then you have stages. Stage 1 ROP is there is uh, demarcation between the vascular and avascular retina. Since ROP starts from the disc, you can see that from the disc it goes to the peripheral and there is vascularization is incomplete, it has not reached the periphery. So you have a avascular and vascular zone. This is stage 1. You can see a fine demarcation line between the zone of vascularity and no vascularity. So if you see a demarcation line, this is stage 1. In stage 2, you have a a ridge, a ridge has a height and a width. So you can see clear cut avascular and vascular retina here. This is optic disc. From the optic disc, the blood vessels are growing. They stop growing to the peripheral retina. And it is the peripheral retina you have. The vessels are not growing and this is the avascular retina. Avascular retina is very important because it is the avascular retina from which the VEGF, the vascular and endothelial growth factor is produced. And more the avascular retina, more will be the production of VEGF and more will be the incidence of ROP. So stage 1 is demarcation line, stage 2 is the ridge between vascular and avascular zones. And in stage 3, there is neovascularization. You can see that the ridge between vascular and avascular retina and there is neovascularization which is, can be seen around the ridge. So that is stage 3. Stage 4 is retinal detachment. 
so partial adrenal detachment without involving the fovea and stage 4b is complete retinal, retinal, partial retinal detachment involving the fovea stage 5 is complete retinal detachment without the fovea and 5b is um, the retinal detachment including the fovea then you have the plus disease so we have seen the zones we have seen the stages and the plus disease plus disease nothing but it is dilatation and tortuosity of the blood vessels both the veins and the arteries so here you can see the blood vessels which are dilated tortuous from starting from the optic disc till the periphery and you can see a demarcation line between the vascular and avascular there is also near vascularization seen around the bridge posterior aggressive posterior ROP was nothing but the plus disease in the posterior zone 1 ROP so there are some modifications to this which i'll discuss in the subsequent slides but it used to be the dilatation and the dilatation and tortuosity of blood vessels in the posterior part of retina used to be called aggressive posterior ROP now currently there are some changes in the classification and uh, now there are some new terminology so there is something called posterior zone 2 ROP this is come from the new ECROP classification you can see that in the zone 2 they are further divided into posterior zone 2 so which is actually from the zone 1 to optic disc diameter from the zone 1 in the zone 2 is called posterior zone 2 and this is because any ROP in this part is also considered to be significant then the other new thing is although plus disease was considered to be one uh, variant that is dilatation and tortuosity but now they realize that even in plus disease it can be normal but what is seen in the figure a to dilated arteries in figure b and then you can see dilated arteries and dilated veins in figure d you can see e and f also dilated arteries and dilated veins so it is a progression from normal to plus disease so that's why you have normal disease normal uh, um, retinal blood vessels then you have a pre plus retinal vessels and plus disease so just to ensure that the severity is appropriately graded then you have some peculiar terms called notch this you can see in the figure b so you can see here that although the disease is more in stage 2 but a uh, zone 2 you can see that part of the avascular zone uh, as notched into zone 1 so wherever the notching is or wherever the avascular retina is seen at the tip that becomes a zone so in figure b it is a zone 1 disease rather than zone 2 disease and this is this notch has important because you have to classify it as zone 1 disease then stage there is a new term of five stage 5c disease it is nothing but stage 5b that is complete retinal uh, detachment with lens opacities and uh, vitreous haziness and things like that. So this is a new term. Then another term which has been introduced in the ECROP is regression ROP, uh, regressing ROP and reactivation ROP. In the first one you can see in uh, figure A there was ROP then laser was given and you can see immediately after laser there is uh, the avascular retina started uh, showing some changes and few weeks after that you can see that in the A vascular retina, uh, there is a good vascularization in uh, A, the last uh, last photograph. In figure B, you can see that there is A vascular and vascular retina. In this case, when a vascular endothelial growth factor was given, and you can see rapid polar uh, rapid uh, vascularization of the A vascular retina. So when you give laser, the A vascularity become vascular little slowly, but when you give anti VEGF, there is a rapid uh, neovascularization uh, vascularization of the normal vascularization of the a vascular retina now there is a new term called the reactivation or reactivation rop and that can be seen both in uh, uh, laser as well as in the uh, vegf but most likely the vegf when you give vegf there is more likely to be more reactivation uh, rop and this reactivation rop occurs uh, uh, maybe around 15 to 16 weeks uh, uh, after giving VEGF, whereas it, it appears up around six weeks after giving laser. So the vascularization is rapid in a VEGF, but the onset of uh, reactivation ROP is later in VEGF. So whereas the vascularization is slower in uh, laser and if reactivation occurs, it is faster in laser.
in the figure c you can see that uh, there was a ridge and uh, the treatment was given so you can see that vascular retin there is a vascularization of the peripheral retina but at the same time there is reactivation you can see the communication of retinal blood vessels in the periphery and then there is a new zone which has appeared between vascular and avascular much more posteriorly so this is how the new terminology got added to e crop classification so why do we classify we classify because we need to treat and uh, the treatment could be laser or uh, anti vegf but uh, which babies we need to treat for that we need to classify and also for prognostication because uh, mild may not have much sequelae but moderate and sequel severe rop can have even long term sequelae and also for subsequent screening so if you see a baby in uh, uh, type 1 rop then you need to ensure that it is a site threatening rop so immediately laser has to be done within 48 hours but if it is a um, pre thresh uh, if it's rop which uh, which is there avascular vascular so we can do weekly screening so depending upon the severity you can see whether you need to screen on a weekly basis or every uh, third or fourth day so it also helps you to timing of subsequent screening especially after doing laser it all depends upon the severity and the how the laser was done so it helps you to know when to screen how long to screen and also how to treat and what will be the long term classification long, long term prognostication for all this purpose we need to classify rop into stages zones plus disease so there are three um, four treatment models modalities for rop the classical was laser and uh, we all know that in laser what they do is they ablate the avascular retina once you ablate the avascular retina the wedge of uh, the quantity and uh, quantity of vascular endothelial growth factor decreases that decreases the neovascularization and will help in normal vascularization of peripheral retina so one of the reasons uh, if there is a large amount of avascular retina then you have to do large photocoagulation and this can lead to tunnel vision so that's why most people started using anti vegf that is anti vascular endothelial growth factor and uh, they found the results are almost equivalent to laser photocoagulation um, there are some people who prefer uh, laser and there are some people who prefer vegf but the evidence says that both are equally efficacious um, but however there are some situations you will prefer laser and there are some situations where you prefer anti vegf you prefer anti vegf for mostly posterior rop because if in posterior rop you need to ablate lot of anterior uh, retina so that is why anti vegf is preferred over uh, laser and uh, if the cornea is opaque or the lens is opaque obviously we need to use uh, anti vegf intra vitreal injections and uh, if the pupil we are not able to dilate and we are not able to see then again anti vegf is preferred now we already discussed and there are a lot of uh, evidence based trials showing that uh, the beat rop trial the rainbow trial all of them have shown that using laser and um, vegf the outcomes are almost similar uh, but however the regression of rop is faster with a vegf and however the but uh, the delayed onset of reactivation rop is uh, delayed in uh, vegf compared to laser cryotherapy used to be the first therapy for rop but now uh, nowadays most of the people do not use cryotherapy for rop in the laser there are two types of laser argon and diode and people are slowly moving on to diode laser because it causes less cataract uh, compared to organ laser as a complication surgical rop is mainly mainly for stage 4 and stage 5 rop where there is already a retinal detachment in these conditions you will prefer surgery and buckling is what is done in uh, uh, vitrectomy and buckling scler scleral buckling is what is done in surgical therapies so we should ensure that the babies are screened early, early and none of these babies should go to the stage 4 or stage 5 um, or need surgery and that can be done only by early and aggressive uh, screening and treatment so there are there are classification of rop used to be threshold and pre threshold but now um, we are uh, thresh threshold rop used to be the uh, uh, classification for treatment threshold rop was a stage 3 zone 1 zone 2 and plus disease this was the only rop which was treated but currently now after the et rop early treatment of rop treatment is indicated for all type 1 ropes what is type 1 rop any disease in zone 1 which is plus disease or stage 3 disease in zone 1 without plus also needs treatment or laser or uh, anti vegf whereas in stage zone 2 stage 3 or stage stage 2 or stage 3 and plus disease rop requires 
treatment. So type 1 ROP is the ROP which requires treatment now and this has come up after the ET ROP studies. Whereas it used to be the threshold ROP previously. Now by doing early treatment of ROP we realize that there will be lesser complications and lesser long term sequelae. And that is why the current st standards recommend treatment for type 1 ROP. Now when to screen for these babies? Uh, we need to whom to screen? We, in our country all babies less than or equal to 34 weeks and all babies less than 2000 grams need to be screened for ROP. And even bigger babies, bigger premature babies who require prolonged oxygen who had um, uh, significant infections, these babies also need to be screened for ROP at, uh, at, term, uh, at uh, 28 days of birth. So how do we screen? First, uh, before the most of the time in most of the unit, on a weekly basis, uh, the ophthalmologists come to the unit and all the babies who require screening are identified. And an hour before the screening is done, the pupils are dilated using uh, tropicamide and phenylephrine. Now we have combination medicines which have both tropicamide and phenylephrine. 2.5% phenylephrine and tropicamide 1% are used. There are uh, uh, three times at 15 minutes interval the drops are put so that the pupils are dilated when the ophthalmologist comes to evaluate the babies. And during the ROP screening, pain relief should be uh, offered to all the babies. Um, during the procedure, feeding is not done, but to control the pain, sucrose can be used, swaddling can be used, restraint therapy can be used, or paracetamol drops can also be used. And there are some good studies which have shown that even kangaroo mother care or uh, ROP screening in skin to skin contact and some amount of express breast milk being poured into the mouth of the baby while the screening is happening can also all help in decreasing the pain uh, while doing the ROP screening. When to screen? As a general, remember the rule of 30. Tease din ka roshni is the, um, is, is the word which we all uh, want to remember. Tease din roshni ka. So, rule of 30 from birth, all babies, uh, all premature babies should be screened at uh, day 30 of the birth. However, small IUGR, extreme preterm babies should be screened at 21 days because these babies are likely to have aggressive ROPs. So, prevention obviously is the best strategy and for prevention, remember the mnemonic point. So, pain relief. So, every baby in the NICU, we should try to see, ensure that we give developmental supportive care and relieve pain for whatever procedures we do because pain is one of the important risk factors for ROP. And the well-known risk factor is oxygen therapy. We need to ensure that oxygen targets are between 91 to 95 percent and we need to bin, minimize the duration of oxygen and also duration of ventilation. Especially in the delivery room, try to avoid hyperoxia. And in many of our SNCUs, I think one of the important reasons for high incidence of ROP is use of food oxygens or head box oxygen. As long as possible, try to avoid head oxygen. Head box oxygen, use nasal prongs, low flow, 0.1 to 0.5 liters of oxygen if you want to give uh, oxygen for small premature babies. Uh, and use it only when needed. If the saturations are less than 90% or if the um, only then use the uh, oxygen as nasal therapy. But uh, do not use oxygen for babies, uh, bigger babies or premature babies in the hood ox using hood oxygen. All by all means, we should ensure the infections are reduced and we should ensure that babies get aggressive enteral and parental nutrition. So minimize the blood transfusions. Um, one method by which blood transfusion will cause ROP is uh, uh, it will, when you give blood transfusion, you're giving adult blood and adult blood has uh, less affinity for oxygen. So the delivery of oxygen to the tissues is increased and this, increase, uh, this increases the risk of our, uh, in, uh, worsening ROP in premature babies. Uh, one of the best method or uh, primary prevention is using antinatal steroids because antinatal steroids will improve almost all the morbidities of preterm and thereby decrease the risk of having ROP. In the points, P is pain relief, O is oxygen saturation, I is infection control, N is nutrition, and T is blood transfusions. Uh, strict guidelines. So try to minimize the number of blood transfusion you give for these babies. The other most important preventive strategy which um, we would like to promote is use of mother's own milk. Start using from the labor room and get ensure that the, each baby gets colostrum within the first one to hour and ensure that the mother is pumping the milk on six to eight times a day and every baby by third or fourth day should get only exclusive breastfeeding on exclusive mother's own milk so that all babies only on mother's own milk and not even on donor or formula in any point of time. So if you start early, if you pump more frequently and if you give good support to the mother, it is possible that every baby in the NICU gets only 
mother's own milk and it has been shown that mother's own milk uh, decreases incidence and severity of rop and there is a dose dependent effect of rop uh, of mother's own milk and rop so the he higher the concentration of uh, uh, enteral feed is mother's own milk the lesser the chance that uh, rop is there going to be there in the babies uh, uh, dha supplementation there are some studies to show benefit in decreasing the incidence of rop but the confidence intervals are very wide there are unproven or experimental strategies which are still being worked out d penicillin and vitamin e there are some trials which have shown some efficacy but it's not a standard of therapy reduce ambient light again there is uh, one or two rcts on this but again it is not a standard of therapy inositol has also been tried but again the evidence is not strong to support routine use of inositol and uh, one important thing is if rop is already set in how do we prevent progression of rop so to prevent progression of rop people thought of giving high oxygen that is 96 to 99% this is actually decrease the severity of rop but unfortunately it increase the pulmonary morbidities so there is no point in uh, uh, decreasing rop and causing the baby to be on prolonged oxygen prolonged ventilation so the adverse effects are much more when the benefits of using high oxygen target so that's why currently the recommendations are to use 91 to 95% saturation limit so whatever you you if i were to use should ensure that the saturation targets are between 91 to 95 percent when the baby is on oxygen so just to summarize rop is a blinding disease of the prematurity we have seen that nearly 500 babies in our country are getting blind because of this disease and mostly it is because of inadequate or inappropriate screening and uh, delay in the treatment uh, low birth weight or prematurity are the important risk factors and all babies less than 35 weeks and uh, less than 2 kg should be screened for rop at 30 days and uh, remember point for the prevention of rop laser and wgf are equally efficacious for prevention of rop and uh, always when you look at the file of the uh, of the ophthalmologist uh, look at the stage look at the zone look at the clock hours and the pest disease because it's a type 1 rop which requires therapy and the earlier you treat the better are the outcomes so et rop has shown that earlier treatment will decrease the sequelae of rop so these are some of the current guidelines protocol for screening so when to screen screening methods are in direct ophthalmoscopy and screening can occur in the NICU so we can schedule one day in a week so that screening can be done for all babies in the NICU and babies who are discharged can come back to the unit on a weekly basis so documentation should be on uh, of the, all the ophthalmologists document on both the eyes what is the zone stage and uh, whether plus disease is there or not and uh, after screening so 30 days screening should be done if the retinal vessels are mature no further screening is required uh, if rop is present in one or both eyes screening should continue as long as there is um, uh, uh, neovascularization is complete but if there is a uh, side threatening rop within 48 hours the baby should be getting laser or anti vegf and after this all these babies should be followed up in the dics uh, with an optometrist for at least uh, uh, with first examination again at six months to look for uh, um high myopias squints and other uh, um, other complications related to tunnel vision other complication related to rop and treatment of rop uh, treatment um uh, we are type 1 rop is the one which will require treatment as i told you treatment mostly uh, most people prefer um, uh, laser or vegf and uh, during laser in every effort should be done done to prevent pain and uh, laser can be done in the nicus or in the essentius and uh, but after after discharge they can be done in the neonatal in the ophthalmology departments but ensure that they have adequate resuscitation facilities when they're doing a, a laser in the ophthalmology centers so the uh, the prevention is prime uh, uh, the primary secondary and tertiary prevention primary prevention is before delivery using uh, uh, antenatal steroids delivery in tertiary care centers in the delivery room ensuring uh, early and aggressive CPAP using pulse oximeters using blenders and in the NICUs uh, following the point principle and once uh, um, uh, secondary prevention is once ROP is set in to prevent the progression and uh, tertiary care prevention is even babies who have sight net threatening ROP to do laser or uh, anti vegf or, uh, or uh, surgical therapy for severe ROPs. So that's all and uh, thank you for all of you for listening to this and uh, we are open for questions now. So you can unmute yourself and ask questions or 
write on the chat box the questions and I'll be answering. No questions? Okay, maybe you can answer in the chat box what is points? P O I N T S. What is P O I N T? Then you are in long. Yeah, pain relief. O is for? Oxygen saturation targeting. Yes. I. I infection control yes n n nutrition mainly mother's own milk and t very good t transfusion tran strict transfusion guidelines wonderful thank you so much uh, which type of rop requires laser or anti vegf which type of uh, rop requires laser or anti vegf type 1 rop so what is type 1 ROP? What is type 1 ROP? Yes, type 1 ROP. What is a zone? What is a stage? Zone 1, yes. And plus disease plus or zone 1 stage 3. Wonderful. So zone 1 plus disease, zone 1 stage 3 without plus, zone 2 stage 3 and stage 3 with plus disease. This is type 1 ROP. All these ROPs require treatment either with laser or VEGF. Which ROP is, which treatment is better, laser or uh, anti vegf Which is better? Very good, Sunya, both. Good, good. So both are equally efficacious, but there are some scenarios you will prefer uh, anti vegf So, but uh, both can be having uh, reactivation. So what are the new additions in crop classification? Some new additions in the crop classifications. Very good. Posterior zone 2 is added. Yes. Regression reactivation. Very good. 5C. Wonderful. Good. What else? What else? So, posterior ROP is now aggressive posterior ROP. Now is called only post uh, aggressive ROP. Yes. Notch and normal to plus disease. So, there is a variation of plus. So that's why there is normal to plus disease and there is a notch. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good. So which, which epidemic of ROP is in India in now? Or all the developing countries are in? Okay. Third epidemic. Third epidemic happens because of what reasons? Third epidemic of ROP is because of what reasons? Very good. High oxygen use, ventilation, infections in bigger babies and increase survival of very low birth weight babies. So it's a combination of these two. Because more and more premature babies are surviving in some units, they have ROP. And in units with moderate care or in a sense you like situations, high oxygen use, infection and sepsis, all this in bigger babies is causing ROP. So you have a blend of both. So that is why we are in the third epidemic of ROP. In the SNCs, what is what in oxygen is the best preventive strategy to prevent ROP? In the SNCs, what are the best preventive strategies to prevent ROP? What you should not use in the essence use? Hood oxygen, yes. Throw all the hoods, use nasal prongs and with very low flows. Hood oxygen, whether you give 1 liter or 5 liters, it will give 100% oxygen. So please do not use hood oxygen in the NICUs or in the essence use. So what can, how we can prevent ROP from the delivery room? Yeah, room air resuscitation is one method. What else we can do? CPAP early, very good. What else? Using blenders and pulse oximeters. And there should be adequate facilities for providing room air. If you want to use blender, you need oxygen source and, and also air source. And blender and pulse oximeter availability are important in the labor room to prevent ROP setting in the labor room itself. So what are the prenatal interventions which have been shown to decrease ROP? Antinatal steroids, very good, very good. 
antenatal steroid should be given for babies between 24 to 34 weeks and if the mother is going to deliver in the next one week only. Only mothers who are likely to deliver are the mothers who should receive antenatal steroids. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So if there are any more questions, I'll take up. We'll wait for one more minute. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this yes, is yes. Dr. Sonia. I would like to ask a question, sir. Uh, if there is risk factors in the term babies, uh, do you? Uh, so, so we we have already discussed that by 36 yes, weeks, uh, the retinal vasculation is complete on the nasal side, and 40 weeks it is complete on the temporal side. So, term babies there is no need to screen, but they need uh, off the screening for other purposes. So, but uh, only preterm needs screening. And in that preterm, any baby less than 35, less than 2 kg will always require, but more than 35, more than or equal to 35 and more than or equal to 2 kgs, they will require screening only if they required oxygen or had very sick course in the NICU. Okay. But they should be preterm. Term babies, no need. Okay. Thank you, sir. What is the use of oral propranolol? Any recommendation, sir? What is the role of? Uh, sir, propranolol. Okay, there are some trials of propranolol used uh, to prevent neovascularization, uh, but it is not a standard of therapy yet. The evidence is not strong enough. Uh, on which at which stage vision can be salvaged type 1 rop the you do the type 1 rop screening um, uh, treatment you can salvage the vision complete salvage of vision babies who have uh, undergone laser at the correct time or anti vgf they do not lose vision so our aim should be to pick up the stage of rop even before it is stage one, uh, type 1 rop and these babies should be monitored if they have rop till vascularization is complete and sometimes, although we say it is 40 weeks, but some of these babies will continue to grow the vessels till 48 weeks to 52 weeks also. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's, it's very nice and um, um, thank you. Unit, I'll close.